Good morning, Church, and Happy Easter. My name is Noel Makaset, pastor of Jaius Church here in Suri and in Chiruak. It's my joy and honor to be here and uh, share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's great to have you worshiping with us this Easter morning. The reason why we are in this place is, of course, to celebrate the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus is alive. Amen. Can we say amen for that? Amen. He rose from the dead. He is risen. He conquered the power of death. That's why we are in this particular place. We want to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the name above all names. And His name is Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. Jesus. Amen? He conquered the power of God. The power, the, 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 the power of death. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to welcome everyone. The Lord bless you, to the, you today with great assurance of His promises. Amen. His promises are true and amen. We can depend on the promises of God because Jesus is alive. Jesus conquered the power of death. You know, yesterday, in our Encounter God retreat, we talk about the power of the cross. That Jesus Christ was beaten, he was bruised, and he died on the cross. There's power on the cross. He died. But the good news is, Jesus is not dead. He died on the cross, but the truth of the matter is, Jesus is not dead. God is not dead. He is alive. Hallelujah. He is alive because he conquered the power of death. The resurrection turns the cross from defeat into victory. That's why we celebrate. His death on the cross will be meaningless without the, validation, without the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It proves that Jesus is truly God. In other words, we're serving an almighty God. We're serving a living God. Therefore, we could pour out our hearts of worship to Him. We could pour out our very own heart, heart ache. We could pour out our needs to the Lord because He is alive. He can, see, he can see, He can hear your cry. He can reach you out. Amen. He could embrace you because He's alive. He is not a dead God. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, allow me to talk about some very powerful words that Jesus mentioned after his resurrection. Maybe you're familiar with Manny Pacquiao. How many of you watched the fight of Manny Pacquiao? Manny Pacquiao versus Timothy Bradley. You know, Manny Pacquiao was considered as a, Mexi a conqueror of many boxers. He was considered a conqueror of many boxers. You know, before and after the fight, in fact, he was considered Mexican sooners or conquerors of many Mexican boxers. He conquered legendary boxers. Mexican, not ordinary boxers. He conquered different nations, uh, boxers who came from different nations, England, Hatton, you can name it. He was considered as a conqueror of many, ma many boxers. But the good thing with Manny Pacquiao, before and after the fight, you know, they will always ask him words. There's a, what we call a pre-fight, and there's a, what we call interview between Manny Pacquiao and his opponents. And the last opponent was Timothy Bradley. Have you, have you watched that? pre-fight at the end of their conversation they will give them a chance to talk about their opponent last word and Timothy brother says Manny I salute with you but there's no killer instinct on you I don't afraid about you there is no killer instinct you know what Manny Pacquiao said his last word this word says 
And he said, at the face of Timothy Bradley, and I quote, He who humble himself will be exalted. And who, he, he said, he who humble himself will be exalted. But he, those who exalted themselves will be, will be humbled. That's what he said. The last word he said to Timothy Bradley, after, before his fight. And after his fight, after the game, after the fight between Timothy and Manny Pacquiao, here comes a guy, I don't know this guy, and ask Manny Pacquiao, what can you say to your fans? What can you say? Can you say words to your fans and to, your, to these many people? What kind of words you want to say to these people? You know what he said? In front of many people, thousands of people, not only thousands, but worldwide. And he declared, and look at what he said. After the fight, he said, thanks for the victory. Hallelujah. He said, thanks for the victory in Jesus' name. He declared, he confessed. He say a word of declaration because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He conquered his enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, victory comes from the Lord. And today, there's power in the word. There's power in the word. Manny Pacquiao, a conqueror of many boxers. But I want you to know today the words of a conqueror king. He is a true conqueror. And his name is Jesus. The name above all names. And I believe Jesus declared words. A very powerful words after his resurrection. And allow this word to speak and minister to us. What about the words of the conqueror king? What kind of words he spoken? He spoke to his people, to his disciples. And I want you to look at this. We're going to look at three different dealings that Jesus had with three different people after the resurrection. Three different words. And let's start by observing how Jesus spoke with Mary Magdalene in the garden. Remember, after his resurrection, he met this woman by the name of Mary Magdalene in the garden. This word, the very first word Jesus was saying after the resurrection. Jesus spoke word of comfort to Mary. He spoke word of comfort to Mary. And the second one we could see at the upper room as he gathered with the other disciples with Thomas, remember? Thomas, Jesus spoke word of confidence to Thomas. To Mary, he spoke word of comfort. To Thomas, he spoke word of confidence. And finally, we'll see how Jesus spoke with Peter. The same book in John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17. Jesus spoke word of commitment to Peter. And today, as we listen to Jesus' words, my prayer for us is that we will find comfort. We will find confidence. We will find that God will see commitment this morning because of Christ's resurrection. That God will speak our hearts to those who are in sore situation allow the word of God allow the word of God to speak to you and comfort your situation today to those who are probably in the, in the stage that you're doubting about the ability of the Lord Jesus Christ allow the word of God to speak to you and to put your confidence to the one who conquered the power of death and that is Jesus and may the Lord remind us to get together as a church that the word of God will speak to us about our commitment as we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's go to the word of comfort. Let's start this morning by looking at the first word that Jesus spoke after, after his resurrection. The, this word was spoken to a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene. If we study John chapter 20, verse 14 to 16, 
John describes how Mary went to the tomb early in the morning. We could find it how Mary go to the tomb and he found out that Jesus was not there. Remember John chapter 20? It says when she got to the tomb, she saw that the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. That's what the scripture says. So she ran back to where the disciples were and told them. He told about that the empty, that the, the, the cave was empty, the stone was rolled away. She ran back to where the disciples were and told them. Peter and John ran to the tomb to figure out what was going on. That was the scripture says. When they got there, they found the tomb empty. And when they saw it's empty, eventually, eventually the disciples left. And only Mary stayed on the tomb, on the garden. She was crying, that's what the scripture says. She was crying. Then she looked in the tomb and was surprised to find two angels, remember? There were two angels there who asked her why she was crying. That's what the scripture says. She saw two angels. Probably she didn't recognize that these are angels. But she asked, the angels asked, him, asked her, why are you crying? And she told them that someone had stolen Jesus and she didn't know where he was. Then this is what happened in John chapter 20. Look, I want to read this one. It says, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Why is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener. She said, sir, if you have, if you have carried him away, tell me, tell me where you have put him and I will get him Jesus said to her Mary she turned toward him and cried out in Aramic Rabboni which means teacher wow you know this chapter 20 verse 14 to 16 if you if you look at this situation it's a very strong a dramatic situation just imagine Mary she was longing to see Jesus at that particular time she knew that Jesus died on the cross she knew that the body of Christ was put on the cave put with a strong stone a big a huge stone nobody could roll it away she was longing and her heart was full of sorrow probably pain but you know, when she encountered the Lord Jesus Christ on these verses, chapter, chapter 20, verses 14 to 16, the first thing Jesus says is a question. Look at what the question is. Woman, why are you crying? Why are you crying? The first word of Jesus after he raised from the dead is a word of comfort. Hallelujah! For someone he cares. He knows why Mary is crying. He knows. Because he conquered the power of death. He is no longer in a human form. He is already God. Hallelujah. That's why he knew the reason why Mary was crying. Because he conquered the power of death. And he said, Mary, Mary, why are you crying? He knows why Mary is crying. Amen. Because he is God. He conquered the power of death. He's an all-knowing God. Amen? He knew. He knows what has happened to her. He asked her for, this, for her sake, not for the sake of Jesus. He was asking because he really cares about the condition of the heart of Mary. Her heart was full of sorrow, probably pain, because she knew her Messiah, Jesus, died on the cross. Guys, some of you are going through difficult things right now. I don't know. I could not guess what you're facing right now. But I want you to know, Jesus knows what you're going through today. Amen. Because he's not a dead God. Hallelujah. He is a living God. He conquered the power of death. The same thing with Mary. She asked Mary, why are you crying? 
Why are you crying? Maybe some of you need to hear Jesus asking you, Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Maybe you could put a mask today, but deep inside your heart, your heart is crying. Your heart is crying probably because of certain situation. Your heart is crying probably because you're facing a difficult situation. I don't know. Because I'm a human. I cannot guess. But God knows what you're going, what, what you're facing right now. And He knows, hallelujah, because He's a God. He's, a, he is, he's, he's an almighty God who can read your mind, hallelujah, who can test your heart, hallelujah. And He knows what you're facing right now today. Some of you need to know what, that Jesus cares about your pain. He cares about your situation. He cares about your, he cares about your, your sorrow. He cares about your deepest moment in life. In fact, the Bible says, He entered into your pain on the cross. Remember? He died. He endured pain. And the cross, the Bible says, He cares about what you are experiencing, what you are experiencing right now. Jesus experienced all those things while He was on the cross. He experienced. He endured pain. Suffered from the hands of Roman soldiers. Pierced with spear, mocked by people, accused by people. He experienced all those things while he was on earth. That's why if you are in that kind of situation, God knows. Amen? And he's willing to comfort you. He's willing to comfort you. Just imagine, Jesus doesn't just ask Mary why she is crying. But more than that, He wants to do something about it. He wants to do something about it. You know, people can ask your situation, but sometimes they cannot extend help. They can just ask question, why? Why? But the truth of the matters. They cannot extend help. Why? Because they might have the same problem. Or greater than yours. They could ask your situation, what, what are you facing right now? What are you facing right now, brother, sister? I could ask what you're facing right now. But because I'm a limited person, I'm only a kind of person that could ask question about your situation. But probably I could not extend help. But the good thing with our Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Jesus doesn't just ask Mary why she's crying, but more than that, He wants to do something about it. Hallelujah! Not with Jesus, because Jesus conquered death that proves that He is truly God. Therefore, He could speak to us in a very personal way. He could speak to you he could speak to me in a very personal way because he's a living God. Hallelujah. Look at what he said. He called her name Mary. It's a very personal declaration. said Mary. It's a very intimate relationship between Mary and Jesus. You know you're precious in the sight of God. She knows you by name. He knows you by name. Amen. His relationship with you is a very intimate, very personal. That's the way Jesus established his relationship to each one of us. Very personal. He called her name Mary. Do you know that, that feeling when someone says your name? Name is so important. That's why I, I try to always remember every name, every member of the church. You know, I had, I had a funny, funny experience in Ontario during the altar call. There was a family who came forward to the altar and they're asking for prayer. I prayed them by name. I prayed for the, for the wife by name. I prayed for their children. They have three kids. I prayed for their names one by one. But I could not recall the name of the husband. <laughs> I said, and this guy, I played with him basketball. I had time to play with him. But at that particular time, I could not recall 
his name. I prayed to his wife by name. I prayed the name of, their, of his kids by name. But I could not recall and mention his name. And I was so embarrassed. I was so, uh, there's guilt on my, on my hand. I said, after the, after the service, I approached him. That's the time I, re, I remember his name. And I said, brother, I'm very, very sorry. I, as I approached him, I asked forgiveness. I asked, sorry. I could not recall him. But now, I could mention it now. <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. It's not a big deal, pastor. It's okay. It happens. <laughs> You're getting younger, pastor. <laughs> You know how powerful it's good to recall, it's good to remember every name. That's why when we talk to someone, address by their name. Amen. So Jesus, look at what, look at what he said. He called her name Mary. Because Mary was so precious with Jesus. The same, not only your name, and he knew what you are facing right now. Isn't it wonderful we're serving an all-knowing God who could speak to us individually in a very personal way? Who could speak to us and meet our needs? Hallelujah! Because He's not a dead God. He's a living God. Hallelujah! So after Mary explained to Jesus that she was crying because someone stole the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus simply said her name, Mary. And at that particular moment, Mary recognized Jesus. She realized that he was alive. Hallelujah. She realized on that particular moment that Jesus conquered the power of death. That's why just imagine an overflowing joy that comes to Mary. She declared, Rabunai. She was amazed that Jesus conquered the power of death. Just imagine that there was an overjoyed that he, she saw Jesus at that particular, particular time. Her heart was full of joy. She said, Rabunai, teacher! Her heart was full of joy knowing that Christ rose from the dead. How is your heart today? Knowing that Jesus Christ conquered the power of death. Is there an overflowing joy? Knowing that because Jesus rose from the dead, conquered the power of death. Is there an overflowing joy in our hearts today? To say, Lord, I'm here. My heart is yours, Lord. My heart is yours, Lord. My heart of worship is yours, Lord. Hallelujah. Mary declared... With an overflowing joy, with, ex with an excitement. Rabunai, teacher, probably, when she saw Jesus in front of her. There's an overflowing joy. The same thing with us. We might not see him, but God wants to see our hearts. A heart that is an overflowing joy. With an expectant heart from our King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Guys, the words that Jesus spoke to Mary were words of comfort. Remember, she grieved his death, but Jesus comforted her. The same thing with us today. That's what some of us here need to hear, words of comfort to whatever pain we're going through. We need to know that he is with us. In fact, he promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you, knowing that Jesus is with us. In the middle of whatever facing we are, what we are facing right now, God is telling you, I am with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you, nor abandon you. That's a promise of the living God. He will never forsake us. He will never abandon us. People will abandon us. People will forsake us. But the good thing with our recent Savior, He will never forsake us. He's with us. Hallelujah. Maybe some of you need to hear that today. All of us need to hear at some point in our lives that knowing is comforting you with this powerful word. Hallelujah. That He will never forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Allow the very first word the word of comfort 
Allow the word of God to comfort us today. Remember, brothers and sisters, the resurrection of Jesus Christ brings us comfort because it points to a brand new hope. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are in a helpless situation, if you are in a hopeless situation, God is telling you, hey, there's a point to rejoice. There's a point to rejoice because Jesus is alive. Therefore, there is hope in Christ. There is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And allow the word of God to comfort us today. Word of comfort. And I believe this is the very first word that we need to put in our mind and our hearts. Lord, comfort me today. Comfort me today. Word of comfort. The second is a word of confidence. The same chapter, the Gospel of John, continues with the story to say that she went and told others about Jesus. Remember? She was told by Jesus, Hey, go and tell other disciples that I rose from the dead. So she ran back and told about what happened in the garden, that the, the cave was empty, the, the stone was rolled away. You know what happened? The same chapter, John chapter, chapter, um, 20, 26, 29, that's the same evening, the same, the same day, but it's evening. It says, he appeared to his disciples as they gathered behind locked doors out of fear of what the Jews might do. When word got around that Jesus was supposedly alive again, they locked the doors. Why? Because of fear of the Jews. They fear of the Jews. That's why they lock the door. And whoever, says the Bible, not all the disciples saw him. Thomas wasn't there that night. We don't know, how, we don't know much about Thomas. John, he just, he just mentioned about one, one account in John chapter 20 about, about Thomas. In the book of Luke, in the Gospels, Mark, Luke, and John, the name Thomas was not mentioned. Just few verses. Even in the, book of, in the book of John, it says here, he doesn't appear much in the books of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. John gives us a little more information about Thomas. The only thing I know about Thomas, he was with Jesus. During the time that Jesus was ministering to people, he kept on following Christ. Maybe... At the time they were resting, they, probably Thomas was asking some questions. At better, at, 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 but at the back of his mind, he has a lot of doubts. Because remember, Thomas was called as the doubter. He was called as the Didymus among the, the disciples. He has a lot of doubts, probably at the back of his mind. That's why when he heard about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, he was not there. The first meeting with the disciples, he was not there. But the night after Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to the disciples, says Thomas was missing. He was missing on the first meeting with the disciples. He was not there. And look at what he said in John chapter 20. He says here, he told them that unless... He saw the nail marks in his hands, put his finger into them, and put his finger into the wound of his side. He was not going to believe it. That's what his declaration. He was done with following Jesus. He was done believing. So when the other disciples told him that they saw Jesus, you know what happened? He said, I don't believe. He was not willing to buy it. He wasn't willing to absorb what the disciples thought about, about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not willing to buy it because his mind was full of doubts. And probably at the back of his mind, he was tired. Probably at the back of his mind, he said, it's done about Jesus. It's about time. But you know what Jesus did? Look at John chapter 20, 26 to 29, and then we will just follow this, the, the, the story. A week later, it says, his disciples were in the house again. And this time, Thomas was, was with them. 
The first meeting, he was not there. Because he said, I'm tired about Jesus, probably at the back of his mind. I'm tired of following Christ. But this time in John chapter 20, 26 to 29, a week later, his disciples were in the house again. And Thomas was with them, he says. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas directly, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put into it into my side. And he said, Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet and yet have believed. You know the time, this time, when the disciples got together that particular night, Thomas was with them. The first meeting was not there. Because his declaration, I'm tired, I'm fed up about Jesus. Probably. Just a guess. I'm tired about Jesus. I'm tired about following Christ. I'm tired about putting my belief, my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. His mind was full of doubts. Probably discouragement. Some of you might be able to relate what Thomas is experiencing on that particular time. Maybe we came to the point that we are doubting about our God. Maybe we're doubting about the ability of God, especially when we are facing a very huge, a very difficult situation. Doubt creeps in. Probably fear also creeps in. And sometimes we said, I'm fed up. I'm tired. I don't know what your declaration, if you're facing a very difficult situation. Maybe your mind is full of doubts, full of, you know, you see that there's nothing, that, 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 that there's nothing doing right. The same thing with Thomas. Some of you may have been more passionate about your faith in the past, but have lost some of that today. I don't know. But God knows your heart because He's a living God. Maybe in the past you're so passionate. You, you remember our first love, the first time we get in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you get in love with your husband? With your wife. <laughs> the very first time, remember? Sabi pa natin sa Tagalog, walang makakahadlang. Walang balisong na pwedeng mag-stop sa akin para mapasyalan ka lang. <laughs> Can you transfer it, uh, uh, translate it in English? <laughs> There's no ballet song <laughs> that could stop you. Guys, maybe you're disappointed with how things have turned out in your life today. I don't know. But God knows. And God sees your heart. Amen. We cannot hide before God. But the good thing, because He's a living God, amen, we're serving a living God. He can see you. He can detect what is in your mind, what is in your heart. Not only He could detect, but He could reach you out. And He could help you. On that very moment. This morning. Maybe some of you here are a lot of disappointments in life. You have a lot of questions. Doubts in your mind. The God is telling you. Stop doubting. Stop doubting. Believe. You know this is what Jesus declared. In front of Thomas said. Thomas, Jesus, come and see. See the nail marks. He said to Thomas, see the nail marks. Put your finger where the nails were. Put your hands in my side. Just imagine Jesus helped Thomas believe. He gave him what he needed so that he could have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that's what Jesus is doing now? He's helping us to put our confidence in him. God will do his best to each one of us so that we could put our, our trust in the Lord. And until now, until now, we experience the goodness and the faithfulness of God for us to realize how much He appreciates you. So that you could put your trust 
your confidence on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is inviting us today and telling us, stop doubting. Stop doubting about my power. Stop doubting about my ability. Stop doubting who am I to you. I am a living God. Just believe. Today, why don't we just put our confidence to the Lord Jesus Christ who conquered the power of death. We have questions, we have doubts, we have dis disappointments. But we need to hear something that is going to help us believe. And the Lord is doing it until now. He's helping us to put our confidence in the Lord. We need words of confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't put your confidence on people. Don't put your confidence on things of this world. Don't put your confidence on your pastors. Don't put your confidence on people. Put your confidence on the one who, is, who start the author, the beginner of your faith. And he will finish it through. And his promise is true. And amen. 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 So why don't we put our confidence on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The resurrection gives us comfort because it means that death has been defeated. The resurrection gives us faith because it proved that Jesus conquered the power of death. That Jesus is truly God. No one has ever risen from the dead except for Jesus. Buddha died. Remain, remain dead. Muhammad died. Remain dead. Karl Marx died. Remain dead. Other great founders died, but only Jesus, who conquered the power of death, he is alive. God's not dead. Hallelujah. Therefore, we can rejoice. We can put our confidence to Jesus because he's alive. Words of comfort. Words of confidence. And the last one, words of commitment. The final words that we're going to look at this morning are spoken to Peter. First Mary, then Thomas, now Peter. We know a lot about Peter. I know a lot about Peter. I read the book of First Peter, Second Peter. As I studied the gospel, I heard a lot. I heard a lot about Peter. This guy, he's probably the most well-known disciple. Remember, a very prominent leader. A popular one. In fact, Peter, he's quick to action. Always quick. He's quick to action, quick to be courageous, quick to be faithful. That's Peter quick in everything. He's a kind of person, very quick, very impulsive. He's that kind of person. That's why he's popular. But we know a lot, but, but as you can see here, remember Jesus was dealing with sorrow about Mary and Thomas was dealing with unbelief. But Peter, in this particular passage in John chapter 21, Jesus, Peter was dealing his failure. He failed God. Look at this. Just before Jesus died, Peter had made one, one of his classic statements. He said, Jesus, nobody could stop me. I'm willing to die. <laughs> before they could arrest you, before they could put fingers on you, I'm willing to die. He's always quick. A very quick person, a very quick disciple. Look at what he said. When Jesus said that no one will be able to follow where he was going, Peter said, hey, Jesus, I'm willing to offer my life. A very quick person. And you know, because Jesus, he can read the mind. Look at what he said. Jesus corrected Peter by saying that he would deny him three times. He said, hey, Peter, you don't understand what you're saying. And Jesus said, you will deny me three times. And the Bible says, Peter did. He denied Jesus three times. So after Jesus died on the cross, Peter had a lot to deal with. 
to deal with to see Jesus was hanging on the cross probably his heart was full of you know regret but I think the most difficult thing for Peter to deal with must have been his feeling of failure he failed Jesus that's the most important that's the most difficult thing to consider because he failed God he failed God and God knows about that that one day he will fail Jesus many of us we failed God many times we failed him But you can see in John chapter 21, this is the word of Jesus to Peter. It says, when they had finished eating, remember, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamps. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord. You know that I love you, Jesus said. Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. This is a very powerful scene between Peter and James, uh, Jesus. Remember Peter denied Jesus three times, not once. He denied Jesus three times. That's what the scripture says. But you can see he is overcome with failure. But the question is, what words does Jesus speak to him in the midst of his failure? What word does Jesus speak to, to, to Peter? In the midst of his failure, Jesus gives Peter the opportunity to affirm his commitment of love to Jesus. God has given him a chance to see his commitment again. The same thing with us. God is giving us an opportunity to declare our passion, our love to Jesus. Many times, in fact all of us, failed Jesus many times we failed to read his word to pray we failed to serve him we failed to forgive others we failed him many times but today even though even though we failed him even though we've not done everything we could he's giving us a chance hallelujah to restore our love of commitment to him God is giving us a chance Man, ah, do you really love me? If he will call us by name and he will ask, do you really love me? Are you willing to follow me? Are you willing to serve me? By name. God is asking to each one of us today a word of commitment of our love, our passion to our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, we've talked about three words that Jesus spoke after his resurrection. Jesus, I'd like to end this one. Can you put the conclusion? Jesus spoke words of comfort to Mary, which helped in her, to, in her sorrow. Jesus spoke words of confidence to Thomas, which helped his doubts. Jesus spoke words of commitment to Peter, to help him restore his love and commitment to God. Today, I'd like to encourage everyone just to pick one word. Maybe it's a word of comfort. Maybe it's a word of confidence. Maybe it's a word of commitment. What word God is asking you to respond today? Maybe you need a word of comfort because you are in the deepest moment of your life. Maybe God is asking about your confidence in Him. Maybe your mind Maybe your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of disappointments, a lot of doubts. God is asking you to put your confidence in the Lord. Maybe today, God is asking us about our commitment to restore our passion and love of serving God. It's about time to say, Lord, yes, I love you. I want to serve you. I want to follow you. 
Guys, Jesus conquered the power of death. No matter what you're wrestling today, God is telling you, I overcome all these things. Hallelujah. He is risen. May you be comforted by the risen Jesus. May you anchor your confidence in the risen Jesus. Hallelujah. May you put your commitment in the risen Jesus. Because Jesus is risen. He is alive. Therefore, comfort is sure. Confidence is real. And commitment is good. Best that we could offer to the Lord Jesus Christ. As we commemorate. 